everybody. I'm Ed Robinson, and welcome to this edition of Extra Base Hit. This is the program to get you caught up on anything and anything and everything happening around the world of Major League Baseball. Coming up on this edition of the program, we'll take a look as we are look back at a legacy of a legendary broadcaster, and also we'll give you the latest league leaders and standings in Major League Baseball currently going on in the world of Major League Baseball. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. I want to start off with my top three storylines. I want to talk about Jackie Robinson Day. Number 42. That was the number that was worn by Jackie Robinson. April 15th. That was the year, matter of fact, April 15th, 1947. That was the day that Major League Baseball decided to have an African-American player, the first African-American player to play in the major leagues, Jackie Robinson. And since that period of time, Jackie had an enormous impact, not just in the world of baseball, but most importantly, after his playing career was over with, Jackie continued to be a champion for social change and campaign for civil rights. And Jackie Robinson Day, April 15th, since April 15th of 2004, Major League Baseball has commemorated that day as Jackie Robinson Day, number 42. Matter of fact, number 42, that number is significant, not just because of, of with Jackie wearing that number, but most importantly, all Major League Baseball teams have retired that number. So all Major League Baseball teams cannot wear the number 42 because Major League Baseball has retired that number and they started doing that in 1997. He's the first professional athlete in any sport to be to be given that distinctive honor. So Jackie Robinson, as, as I stated earlier, was the first African-American player to play in the major leagues. And April 15, 1947, was a special day because that led the way for other players to follow behind Jackie, like Hank Aaron, Frank Robinson, Willie Mays, and, of course, Larry Doby. Larry Doby was the first African-American player to play in the American leagues. And, um, again, Jackie Robinson, that day has become a day of a commemoration and a looking back and celebration of his career and the work that he did beyond the world of baseball. And every team, every team in the league, of course, the team that he played for, the Dodgers, but when the team was in Brooklyn before coming over to Los Angeles, uh, Jackie his legacy was celebrated by all, all of the Major League Baseball teams and certainly, again, a, a guy that, that paved the way, not just in terms of his athletic abilities, but also, too, most importantly, in his fight for social change and what he did, you know, being alongside politicians and things of that nature. Certainly was a day that was commemorated well and just honoring his legacy and there, on that on that special day, as I mentioned earlier, even though the number 42 has been retired by all teams in Major League Baseball, for that one particular day, all players and umpires wear the number 42. So, again, it was a, a special day. It was a great day and honoring not just a human being, not just an athlete, but just a humanitarian and Jackie Robinson. My next storyline is going to be John Sterling. You may not know the name but you know the team as the Bronx Bombers, the New York Yankees. John Sterling, the legendary radio announcer for the New York Yankees, has announced his retirement. It's effective immediately. Sterling had been the radio voice of the Yankees since 1989, and before that he called games for the Atlanta Braves from 1982 to 1987. But Sterling is best known as being the radio voice of the Yankees since 1989. So... John Sterling, right? I mean, he's, he's seen it all, right? He's announced seven World Series. Five of those have been victories. He's a multiple sports Emmy Award winner. And what can you say about the guy? I mean, when you think of just New York Yankees and really just New York sports icons as a whole, he's one of the first ones to come to your mind. And John Sterling, certainly somebody, him along with Susan Waldman, particularly during the 90s and even up until now, up until now, with just being a part of the whole New York Yankees lore and just being a part of what the Yankees are all about from the time, of, as we saw it with the George Steinbrenner era to the current era now, and of course with Brian Cashman being in the front office. I know Sterling has seen it. He's seen it, been through it, witnessed in that franchise the resurgence of the Yankees with Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera, Bernie Williams, 
uh, Tino Martinez, Jorge Posada, just to name a few, he saw that. And then also, also seeing the ending of Derek Jeter's career and coming in with Giancarlo Stanton and Aaron Judge and things of that nature. So, as I stated earlier, Sterling had been the radio voice of the Yankees since 1989. And, again, he is a fixture not just on the East Coast, but most importantly amongst New York Yankee fans and in that New York City metropolitan area, which is very vast and, and a, a, a lot of people there, and they really love their New York Yankees. So, I know Sterling, he's battled some health issues as of late, but job well done. And uh, certainly he spent a lot of time as the radio voice of the New York Yankees and wish him nothing but the best of luck in all of his future endeavors. And for my last storyline is going to be the Los Angeles Dodgers. So the Dodgers, right, the off season, what can you say? Big signing with Shohei Otani. The rest is history, right? Shohei Otani playing great baseball so far in this early part of the season, this long 162-game Major League Baseball season, not just with Shohei Otani, but Mookie Betts, Teoscar Hernandez, Freddie Freeman, Will Smith, Max Muncy, right? Those guys have been, I mean, putting up some numbers, and they've been putting up hits in this early part of the Major League Baseball season. As this show is currently airing, they have the best record in the Major Leagues. And then when you've got guys that have been pitching very well, just for example, with the likes of a Tyler Glasnow pitching at a very high level, then you've got a Yoshinobu Yamamoto, who is the other big-time Japanese player alongside Shohei Otani. Uh, James Paxton, uh, currently undefeated as this show is airing. They're just clicking on, clicking on all cylinders right now, but it's really been the bats of Otani and Betts. Those two have really, I mean, listen, when you think of Mookie Betts, a generational talent, a once-in-a-lifetime talent, not just on the defensive side but on the offensive side as well, and Shohei Otani, Need we say more about him, right? Since he's arrived on U.S. soil, he's just been a, a pop culture phenomenon. And then, as I mentioned earlier, with the other players like Hernandez, Freeman, Smith, and also Muncie, and then when you've got Glasnow and Yamamoto at the pitching rotation, they're clicking on, on all cylinders right now. Again, Dave Roberts, doing what Dave Roberts does best, right? So far, so good. A good first half of the regular season for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And then the Dodgers... Between the, mo the months of March and April, put together a record of 19 and 13. And as this show is currently airing, they have been unstoppable so far in the month of May. So big ups to the Los Angeles Dodgers. They're playing at an extreme high level right now. And it's good when you have this great start so far in the first half of the year. The talent was already there with the team. But when, you added, when, you, when they added Otani in the offseason... Man, <laughs> they became automatic World Series favorites, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. When you have a, a, a monstrous team like that, and with that offense like that and the pitching rotation, you just can't beat that. All right, and uh, that takes care of my top three storylines. Uh, now it's time to get some of the award winners thus far in Major League Baseball. Let's start off with the player of the month. In the month of April, the American League player of the month went to Gunnar Henderson, from the Baltimore Orioles. And for the National League, I mentioned his name earlier, Mookie Betts from the Los Angeles Dodgers. And now far as look, the next award, Rookie of the Month, in the month of April for the American League, Colton Kowser from the Baltimore Orioles. And for the National League, Shote Imanaga from the Chicago Cubs. Let's move over now to Pitcher of the Month. For the month of April in the American League, Jose Berrios from the Toronto Blue Jays. And for the National League, Ranger Suarez from the Philadelphia Phillies. And reliever of the month in the American League for the month of April, that award goes to Mason Miller from the Oakland A's. And for the National League, Ryan Helsley of the St. Louis Cardinals. So congratulations to those gentlemen for winning those monthly awards. That's Player of the Month, Rookie of the Month, Pitcher of the Month, and reliever of the month. All right, now it's time to get to the current league leaders in both the American League and the National League. Let's start off with the American League batting average. You talk about one of the best contact hitters in the league, Stephen Kwan. He currently leads the American League in batting average. He's hitting at 353. 
Juan Soto, what a first half he's enjoying so far representing the New York Yankees. He's hitting at 333. Also tied with Soto, representing the Houston Astros, Jeremy Pena. He's also hitting at 333. Coming in at fourth is Salvador Perez from the Kansas City Royals. He's hitting at 328. And in fifth, the Dynamo from Venezuela, Jose Altuve from the Houston Astros. He's batting at 327. Next category is going to be home runs. We're currently tied for first place in the home run category. Kyle Tucker from the Houston Astros and Gunnar Henderson from the Baltimore Orioles. They both have 11 home runs. Next up, tied for third, Mike Trout from the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim and Josh Naylor from the Cleveland, from the Cleveland Guardians. They both have 10 home runs. And in fifth, representing the New York Yankees, Aaron Judge. He has nine home runs. Next category, runs batted in. So leading in RBIs at number one, Juan Soto from the New York Yankees. He has 33 RBIs. Coming in at number two, Salvador Perez from the Kansas City Royals. He has 32. Followed in third from the Cleveland Guardians, Jose Ramirez. He has 31. And fourth, representing the Texas Rangers, Adelis Garcia, he has 30 RBIs. And in fifth, Josh Naylor from the Cleveland Guardians, he has 29. Next category is hits. At number one from the Houston Astros, Jose Altuve, he has 50 hits. Coming in at number two is Juan Soto, he has 49. Tied for third, Marcus Simeon from the Texas Rangers and Bobby Witt Jr. from the Kansas City Royals, he has 48. And in fifth, Jeremy Pena with 47 hits. The last offensive category that we have is stolen bases. At number one, representing the Tampa Bay Rays, Jose Caballero, he has 14. In second, Bobby Witt Jr. from the Kansas City Royals, he has 13. Coming in in third is Duran Blanco from the Kansas City Royals, he has 10 stolen bases. And in tied for fourth, we have Luis Rengifo from the Los Angeles Angels and Julio Rodriguez from the Seattle Mariners. They both have nine stolen bases. Let's move over now to the pitching categories. Let's start off in the wins column. Or should I say, let's start off in the wins category. Coming in at number one, representing the Kansas City Royals, Seth Lugo. He has five wins. And then we have a four-way tie for second place. All of these gentlemen currently have four wins. Jose Barrios from the Toronto Blue Jays, Ronel Blanco from the Houston Astros, Pablo Lopez from the Minnesota Twins, and Tariq Skubal from the Detroit Tigers. Next category is earned run average, ERA. At number one, Cutter Crawford from the Boston Red Sox. He currently has an ERA of 1.75. At number two, Tariq Skubal from the Detroit Tigers. He has an ERA of 1.90. Coming in in third is Seth Lugo from the Kansas City Royals. He has an ERA of 1.92. At number four, Tanner Hawk from the Boston Red Sox. He has an ERA of 1.99. And at number five, Ronel Blanco from the Houston Astros. He has an ERA of 2.23. The next category that we have is saves. Tied for first place with 11 saves. These two are about as good as it gets, not just in the American League, but in all of baseball. Emmanuel Classe from the Cleveland Guardians and Clay Holmes from the New York Yankees. They both have 11 saves. Coming in in third is Jason Foley from the Detroit Tigers. He has nine saves. And tied for fourth, Craig Kimbrell from the Baltimore Orioles and James McArthur from the Kansas City Royals. They both have eight saves. The next category is going to be strikeouts. Tied for first, Jack Flaherty from the Detroit Tigers and Luis Castillo from the Seattle Mariners. They both have 56 strikeouts. In third, Pablo Lopez from the Minnesota Twins. He has 55. And in tied for fourth, Cole Reagan, excuse me, Cole Reagans from the Kansas City Royals and Logan Gilbert from the Seattle Mariners. They both have 54 strikeouts. And that takes care of your league leaders in the American League. Let's move over now to the National League. Start off with batting average at number one. Who else, right? <laughs> Shohei Otani from the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's batting at 355. Tied for second 
We have Shohei's teammate, Mookie Betts from the Los Angeles Dodgers. And we have Alec Baum from the Philadelphia Phillies. They're both hitting 346. Coming in in the fourth is Trey Turner from the Philadelphia Phillies. He has a batting average of 343. And then William Contreras from the Milwaukee Brewers comes in in fifth. He's batting at 340. Next category is going to be home runs. Coming in at number one, Marcel Ozunia from the Atlanta Braves. He has, he has 12 home runs. Coming in at number two, Shohei Otani with 11 home runs. Coming in in third is, is his teammate from the Dodgers, Tiasca Hernandez. He has 10 home runs. And in tied for fourth, Bryce Harper from the Philadelphia Phillies and Max Muncie from the Los Angeles Dodgers. They both have nine home runs. Next category is going to be RBIs. At number one, Marcel Ozunia from the Atlanta Braves. He has 38. At number two, Alec Baum from the Philadelphia Phillies. He has 32. At number three, William Contreras from the Milwaukee Brewers. He has 30 RBIs. In fourth, Teoscar Hernandez from the Los Angeles Dodgers. He has 29 RBIs. And in fifth, Bryce Harper from the Philadelphia Phillies. He's got 28 RBIs. Next category is going to be hits. At number one, Shohei Otani. He's got 54. At number two, Mookie Betts. He has 53. At number three, William Contreras. He has 50. At number four, Luis Arais from the San Diego Padres. He's got 49 hits. And at number and in fifth, Trey Turner from the Philadelphia Phillies. He's got 47 hits. Last offensive category is going to be stolen bases. You talk about one of the rising stars and one of the great young talents in Major League Baseball, Ellie De La Cruz from the Cincinnati Reds. He's got 23 stolen bases. Coming in at number two is Bryce Terang from the Milwaukee Brewers. He has 15. At number three, Ronald Acuna Jr. from the Atlanta Braves. He's got 14 stolen bases. At number four, Jacob Young from the Washington Nationals. He's got 12. And in fifth, Lane Thomas from the Washington Nationals. He has 11. Let's move over now to the pitching categories, and let's start off with wins. Tied for first place in wins, these gentlemen both have six. Tyler Glasnow from the Los Angeles Dodgers and Ranger Suarez from the Philadelphia Phillies. And in tied for third with five wins, Dylan Cease from the San Diego Padres, Chris Sale from the Atlanta Braves, and Shote Imanaga from the Chicago Cubs. Next category is going to be ERA. At number one, Shote Imanaga from the Chicago Cubs. He has an ERA of 1.08. At number two, Reynaldo Lopez from the Atlanta Braves. He has an ERA of 1.53. Coming in in third is the hot shot ace from the Philadelphia Phillies, Zach Wheeler. He has an ERA of 1.64. There's Javier Assad from the Chicago Cubs. He's got an ERA of 1.66. In fifth, Ranger Suarez from the Philadelphia Phillies. He's got an ERA of 1.72. Next category is going to be saves. Tied for first place with 12. Kyle Finnegan from the Washington Nationals and Robert Suarez from the San Diego Padres. And third from the St. Louis Cardinals, Ryan Hensley. Excuse me, Ryan Helsley. He has 11. And fourth, representing the Atlanta Braves with nine saves. Rysel Iglesias. And in fifth, Evan Phillips from the Los Angeles Dodgers with eight saves. Last category is going to be strikeouts. Tied for first with 63, Zach Wheeler and Tyler Glasnow. In third with 60, Dylan Cease. In fourth, representing the Cincinnati Reds with 53, Hunter Green. And in fifth, Chris Sale representing the Atlanta Braves. And that takes care of your current league leaders in Major League Baseball for both the American League and the National League. And before we get on out of here, we want to give you the current standings in the Major Leagues. Let's start off in the American League East. You talk about always tough, always competitive, never a dull moment. The Baltimore Orioles have a record of 24 wins and 12 losses. Next up, the New York Yankees. They have a record of 25 and 14. The Boston Red Sox are next with a record of 19 and 18. 
Next up, the Tampa Bay Rays. They have a record of 19 and 19. And in last place, the Toronto Blue Jays have a record of 17 and 20. Next category, excuse me, the next division is the American League Central. The Cleveland Guardians have a record of 24 and 14. Followed by the Minnesota Twins, they have a record of 22 and 15. The Kansas City Royals are next with a record of 23 and 16. The Detroit Tigers come next with a record of 19 and 18. And the Chicago White Sox are last with a record of 10 and 28. And the last category is going to be the American League West. The Texas Rangers lead the division currently with a record of 22 and 17. The Seattle Mariners are next with a record of 20 and 18. The Oakland A's are next with a record of 18 and 21. The Los Angeles Angels have a record of 14 and 24. And the Houston Astros have a record of 13 and 24. So let's move over now to the National League. In first place, I tell you one thing, the National League East, never a dull moment neither. Competitive teams from start to finish. The Philadelphia Phillies have a record of 26 and 12. Followed by the Atlanta Braves with a record of 22 and 12. The New York Mets are next with a record of 18 and 18. The Washington Nationals also have a record of 18 and 18. And the Miami Marlins are last with a record of 10 and 29. Next category is the excuse me, next division is the National League Central. The Brewers have a record of 22 and 15. The Chicago Cubs are next with a record of 22 and 16. The Pittsburgh Pirates have a record of 17 and 21. Followed by the Cincinnati Reds with a record of 16 and 21. And the St. Louis Cardinals are last with a record of 15 and 22. And last, we have the National League West. The Los Angeles Dodgers have a record of 26 and 13. Followed by the San Diego Padres with a record of 20 and 20. The Arizona Diamondbacks are next with a record of 18 and 20. The San Francisco Giants follow up with a record of 17 and 22. And in last place are the Colorado Rockies with a record of 9 and 28. And that takes care of your current standings in Major League Baseball. And that's going to do it for this edition of Extra Base Hit. Thank you so much for tuning in to the program. Until next, next time, everybody, I'm Ed Robinson saying so long and be safe. Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like, share, and subscribe, and thank you for watching.